Oh, where am I at? Did I do this wrong? Hey, how is it going? Hello, everybody. How are we doing tonight? Welcome to My Manic Mondays on Wednesday night. Uh, first, I want to apologize. I was uh, way exhausted on Monday. I didn't feel like I had enough energy to go on, and I basically fell asleep, like, earliest for me. Um, but yeah, here we are again. Yeah, exactly. Look. Hello. Welcome. My Manic Mondays or Wednesday. It's a, it's the Wednesday edition. Um because I, I just really wanted to to do this um, the show tonight because I wanted to bring the be part of the the shared universe and bring Ming in because I want to interview him, hang out with him, and kind of get to know more about uh, his um, view skew experience. So before we bring Ming, Ming on, we're gonna do what we usually do on the show, just kind of catch you up on what I've been up to. Um, this is gonna be a quick catch up because I got my guests and I don't want to keep them waiting and it is late. So thank you for everybody tuning in this late. Uh, Try to uh, get the show a little bit earlier, but this is a, this is what I got. So, um, hello, I'm CJ Robles. I am your uh, your host for My Manic Mondays, the movies and mental health show. Um, it's a, what I would like to call my interactive vlog because uh, I have people interacting here with comments and and just you know things about uh, movies, mental health, anything that um, basically I try to share with anybody uh, through my experience, um, just as an actor, writer, director, whatever, the worker. Uh, brother, father, anything you can, uh, you, 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 need, uh, you need help with. Uh, catch up with CJ. <laughs> yeah, here you go. So we're catching up. All right. So uh, let's just do a quick little catch up because as of 2023, what I did in 2022 kind of set me here right now in 2023 movie wise. Uh, last year, I um, did the whole Indiegogo thing and I uh, helped uh, be an associate producer for a few movies. And that kind of spinned into people reaching out to me and to be part of other Indiegogos. And now I'm going to be part of three Indiegogos so far. Um, I'm going to be, I spoke about last week, I'm going to be in Desert Fiends. I will have a small little tiny role in there. Might not make it out. Might make it. No, I won't. Not, this is going to be a total like a cool experience for me. Um, it's actually going to be shot on my birthday or around my birthday. I think it's the day after my birthday. So it's going to be pretty cool. We're shooting it next week. So um, I'm going to be part of the scenes. I'm, it's, not my, it's not my set, um, so I'm just going to be here hanging out and uh, getting murdered. And then, um, as I said before, uh, the Amityville um, Reaper. It's a, it's a combination of the Am uh, it's a combo between Amityville Horror and uh, Jack the Ripper. So, uh, yeah, I got a voiceover part in that. So we've got two things. And I got a third one. Uh, this uh, this kind of is kind of a trend here, a little pattern here. I will also be in the Pancake Man. These are on dependent movies that are coming out. Uh, they'll be film being filmed in 2023. Uh, I'll be part of Pancake Man. Um, yeah, doesn't look good for me either in that one. So we'll see how far I get. In, uh, see how many lines or what what I do in that. Uh, hey, thanks. What's up? <laughs> uh, that's a cool present. Yeah, man. <laughs> I like. I like. I like. Was it Bobo Dilly Golf? Yeah, dude. Oh, that's cool graphic. Yeah, 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 man, the pancake. Anyways, uh, so you know what? I don't want to waste any more time. I want to bring my guest in. I got questions. He's got answers. He's got a little bit of time. So uh, without further ado, let's do, uh, let's do a little uh, presentation here, a little intro for um, My Manic Mondays. I give you shared video. Sorry, where are you? Where is it at? <laughs> it didn't pop up. My bad. Let's try this again. Video file. There you are. Without further ado, enjoy.
My bad. <laughs> My bad. Here's the text. Here's Ming. Hey, Ming. How's it going? <laughs> I got. I uploaded the wrong video. <laughs> uh, uh, it's like it's like yeah, press the any key. It's like what's where's the any key? Like which one is that? So. I dude, love it. Dude, this, dude, dude, this, it made me look cool, man. That was a great collage. So sometimes I forget that it was like, oh yeah, I met you know Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. So thank you, thank you for that, dude. I I didn't make you look cool. You made yourself look cool. I was just like, let me go on your Facebook. Let me stalk you on IG. I hope he doesn't really care. It's all out there. Here you go. I saw the Tarantino pic and I had to do a double glaze. I was like, that's not Tarantino. That is Tarantino. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, the Jane Song Bob Strike Back premiere uh august 2001 wow 22 years ago uh in uh westwood uh you know la and um i remember i was talking to brian o'halloran you know we just seen the movie it was great we're buzzing and we look over and we're like holy crap it's quentin Tarantino!" so we, we beelined over and uh got <laughs> with them. so that was Dude. pretty cool but he loves clerks man so that would have been that's cool for him he, he loves kevin he loves Kevin, but it's ironic that uh, Kevin's daughter got into a Tarantino movie. She was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, oh, that's right. and uh, and Kevin hasn't been in a Tarantino movie yet. And you know, I think Quentin's only going to make one more movie, so he's got one more shot he's to be in shot. there. I think you should put Kevin in there, dude. I I like uh, Scream Three. I lost it when I saw them in there, dude. I was like, everybody's like, "What the hell's wrong with this guy?" I was just like, "What the hell are they doing in here?" Dude? Like, yeah, yeah. Why not? Right? They're in the same family, you know. They then uh, why not? Why not throw a Jensen Bomb in the Scream universe? So God, that was that was perfect. Like that's and in my in my uh, as I'm going through my timeline and what I'm understanding and and figuring out like uh, this whole just all oh, what's going on nowadays, uh, you know, media and whatnot. Um, that, that one is one of those, that moments that I remember that Kevin Smith made me laugh outside of a Kevin Smith movie. I was like, but pretty just, cool crossover when you think about it, you know, the screen franchise just came with a sixth movie. Uh, I think the Jane, you know, I think Jane sound Bob have been in one, two, three, four, five, six, like just almost as many, maybe eight. They might have them beat by two, but you know, two long running franchise franchise. Why not? Why not cross them over for a second? Yeah. Pretty yeah. Cool. Yeah. Man, it's a, it's a, it's to me like just, I think the coolest part is meeting everybody that's in the movies, but actually getting to conversate with them. Yeah. And getting to know them better. It's like, oh crap, these are real people. Like this real gentleman right here, David Lee Madison. How are you doing? Oh, sir? yeah. David Madison, everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's awesome. Oh, it's Mark Lamb. Hey, what's up, Mark? Yeah, we've been that's talking awesome. to Mark today. Uh, we we're talking about that cruise, and I was like, I think I'm gonna try it. It seems I, I don't like I don't know if I'd like the cruise, but I'm it's only three days. So, so you're talking about the Kevin Smith view cruise askew. You're talking about that. <laughs> yeah. For anybody who doesn't know, uh, Kevin announced uh, yesterday that uh, they are setting up a, a Kevin Smith view askew themed cruise, and it it sounds awesome. So they're live podcasting, comedy shows, Clerks three script reading. Uh, you know, actors been, been, guests from, from the Viewsk universe. Yeah, I, if you're going, I may see you there, my friend. I'm trying to find a way on that boat, my friend. Yeah, I tried. I, think, I don't know how it works. I'm looking for. Actually, I actually, I should have been more prepared. I have the, uh, I have the the skit right in front of me. The what you just said. I was like, where are you? I just, I just gave it to like three people. Like, do you want to come with me? Because I don't. <laughs> oh, cool. So yeah, if you get three other people, yeah, you, you can all share a cabin, split the costs, and um, yeah. Listen, I've I've never been on a cruise either. I I like for me when I go somewhere, I like to go and explore, right? It's like, oh, there's this dive bar over here, there's this restaurant over here. On a boat, you're kind of trapped there, right? But yeah. the way everybody explained it to me is they're like, dude, this this boat, the cruise ship, is as big as a building. It's like a skyscraper floating from Miami to the Bahamas. And so, you know, the I mean you can you know it would take you days to explore the whole ship. Um, yeah. And so, you know, it's like being in a, a floating city. Um, they're like, you'll be fine. I'm like, okay, cool. So, yeah, I, I I would love to go. I would love to see you on there, CJ. I yeah. think, yeah, I think we would have a great time. Yeah, man, I'm trying. I like, and like, like I said, any excuse I get to just go to like Red Bank, I'm just like trying to get over there because it's 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 just different energy too. What y'all have over there. And real quick, let's do a shameless plug. This is what he was just talking about. There it is. There it is. Yeah, so uh, February 23rd to the 26th, uh, Miami to Nassau. So Kevin Smith, Jason Mewes, uh, you know, Brian O'Halloran and uh, Jeff Anderson from Clerks and Trevor Fairman from Clerks 2 and 3. Kevin's wife is on there. Yeah, it should should be cool. Actually, you know what I, what I was thinking of, what I really want to do? 
a lot of people going on the ship, they're they're podcasters like me and you. Yeah. And I know Kevin's doing live podcasts, but wouldn't it be cool if I set up like a studio somewhere on the ship, like on a deck or something, and we could have rotating podcasters come down and podcast on the cruise ship? Like, how awesome would that be? We'd be doing something that we love doing, but we'd be doing it on like one of the craziest places possible. We'd be podcasting international waters, yeah. no rules with like, you know, a tiki drink in our hand. And, you know, we could just collaborate with other podcasters. I'm, this is something I'm going to pitch for sure. I, I, I don't even, I thought this is something that I was expecting that. Like, that's what I'm already expecting to show yeah. up to. I could be like, hey, there's got to be, there's podcasters here. There's got to be some rotating door or window here that they're going to have. They're got, I don't know. I, now that I got the laptop, I'm like, I could podcast anywhere. Yeah, like just, but it'd be cool to have like a shared universe podcast studio on on the cruise. Oh, yeah. So uh, there's something I got to write up a whole proposal. What I think there's something I can possibly put in front of Kevin. He'd be like, all right, this is a good idea. Let's do it. And not only that, let's say you're podcasting and, you know, him or like Brian O'Halloran are wandering by. Like, hey, can I can you sit down for 10 minutes and get them on your podcast? Yeah, dude. that would be awesome. That would be awesome, man. Yeah. And then, I'm, yeah, because like, he, he also Kev at the at the small castle. He'll do that. He'll just walk in and yeah. imagine that. That'd be awesome. He did yeah, that yeah, for, yeah. For, the, for the good soup live there. Yeah. But um, so. You're you're uh, broadcasting. Let's start off there. What 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 is it with broadcasting? What what attracts you to that? I um like well, it, it's funny because uh you know I'm sitting behind a mic. I run a studio. I, I've recorded hundreds of podcasts, maybe thousands. I lost count, but it wasn't something I wanted to do. I did not have any desire to step behind the microphone. Uh, when I started all of this, uh, it was around the time that it it was when Smodcast came out in 2007. So 20, 26 years ago smodcast launched and you know i'm kevin's technical guy i sit behind a computer i press buttons i help him fix his laptops and his iphones and when he started podcasting i was a guy who would take the his recorded file and put it up on itunes so everybody else could hear it and i i would have been fine doing that the rest of my life and um it wasn't until about 2010 where he was like hey I know you helped me record my podcast, but I want, I got, an, I got another mission for you. I want you to start a podcast. And I was like, why, why, why would I, why, why would I do this? I don't want to do this. You're the talented guy with the cool stories, with the cool friends, the cool job, the cool audience. Um, you, of course you do this. You love talking. You're a great storyteller. People pay you thousands of dollars to hear you talk. I'm the guy, you know, the only thing people know me for is the uh, the guy who works for you, which I'm fine with. It's cool. It's a cool title. A you know, Kevin says webmaster, Kevin Smith's technical guy. I'm fine with that. And he's like, he's like, you don't understand. This is gonna be. This is for everybody. This is fun. This is something everybody should be doing. Plus, he was starting the Smodcast Podcast Network, so he didn't. He needed other shows that weren't just his. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because he was going like five days a week already. It's like I need everybody I know to start shows so we could fill out a whole network. And I was like, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't have any training. I don't, I don't even know if I tell a story particularly good. He's like, man, you don't get it. This isn't really about, you know, being able to tell a joke or something like that. This is being able to express, to talk about what you're passionate about, and have have it in a format where the whole world could listen to it potentially. And I'm like, that sounds intimidating. He's like, no, no, no. You don't understand. Like, what, what, it, what do you love? He's like, what could you talk about for like 45 minutes without even preparing? I'm like, oh, well, that's that's easy. I talk about comic books. I talk about Star Wars. I think I can talk about food. And he's like, well, that's a podcast. I'm like, really? That counts. He's like, those that 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 would be an awesome podcast if you combine all three of those things together. And so. You know, more he more or less he didn't make me do it, but he, you know, he 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 pushed me gently or maybe not so gently. And uh yeah, so uh me and Mike Zapsic from Comic Book Men, uh, you know, we were friends, co workers, we loved the same things. Um, we sat down with the the gear that I originally bought for Kevin and uh we started recording and it was it was mind blowingly fun. It was awesome. We we you know we we had a loose set of things we wanted to talk about, but we yeah we just got to really talk passionately about pop culture, about science fiction, about why we why we love what we loved, 
Uh, and uh, Mike is Mike's a former chef, so we talk about food for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I before I knew it, I asked Kevin like, "How long do you want me to go for?" He's like, and he was like, "Can you go for forty five minutes?" And I was like, "Man, that sounds like a long time." <laughs> forty five minutes, you know that it's like you know I I in my mind is like, wow, uh, what if we're like those stand up comedians that start bombing? Like forty five minutes is a long time. Yeah. Um, but you know, as as we we went, and by the time we stopped. Two hours had gone by, and it didn't even feel like it. And I'm sure you've been through some of those recordings where you look up, like, "Holy cow, man! That you know, like three hours went by. How did that happen?" Just when you start, you know, when you get nerds talking about something that they love, like time, just you know, it's the ultimate like time machine. It's like time doesn't even exist anymore. And uh, and 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 even better, I, I went back and I listened back to the episode recorded, and I heard it. I was like, "Wow, we're not half bad." Like if this was a show that was on a real radio station, this is listenable. Like this is, this would be a real show. And Mike was kind of like, listen, we talk about stuff that we love. Like when you talk about stuff that you love, you're pretty much an expert on it. Um, You know, take Star Wars, for example, I've seen it a thousand times and I bet George Lucas hasn't even seen it that much. He doesn't need to, he lived it. He doesn't need to watch Star Wars anymore. He, he made it. So in that sense, we may know we may know more about Star Wars than he does. We've seen it so many times, and um, yeah, I, and I, I I just remember it was so much fun. I was like, man, we gotta do this every week. We 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 gotta do this every week. And then it kind of became like, I can't wait to do this again. Yeah, and yeah, it's just yeah, it's just great. So that's how I fell into it. That's why I keep doing it, and now. That's why I want to show other people how awesome this is. Yeah, did you just kind of blew my mind there with the. Uh... You know, uh, um, George Lucas hasn't seen it as many times as you have, yeah. y'all. And that just makes me seem like, damn, that's like real deep to me. In my head, it was like, it's like God doesn't even know what Earth is but because he's never on it. Yeah, right. He, made, he created <laughs> he made it. He doesn't need to see it. And, you know, George Lucas doesn't need to see Star Wars a thousand, you know, a thousand yeah. times. He made it. But at this point, who knows when the last time he saw it? He's probably forgotten parts of it. God, whereas I- we know... You know, we know all the TK numbers. We know, you know, Docking Bay 94. We know, we know all this stuff. We know Han shot first. We know all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, right? we took the, so, you took it. I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just hoping to catch him. And he's like, Phantom Menace is my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, like, he, he might say that. You never know. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, he's talking about Mike Zap. There he is. Yeah, there That's he is. Mike Zap. Got, got to meet him. Got That's awesome. That. When, uh, when was that taken? Uh, that was with uh, the first, um, the birthday. No, no, not the, yeah, that was Centennial. That was the birthday. Oh, yeah. So very recently, the, yeah, the hundred, uh, yeah. Yeah. I went, yeah. I went to that one. I went three times in a row. Um, I went to the Centennial and then I went to screening of Clerks 3. I had to yeah. do that, man. That, that one I had, cause I was like, it's one thing to watch a movie at the theater, like when it first gets premiered. But if yeah. I could actually watch it with the people that were in it that have oh, this, man. I, 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 I've, I've seen Clerks three. Well, I've seen it three times with Kevin because I saw it the, once in Jersey, once in San Antonio, and once in Austin. Yeah. And then I watched it on my own, and all like all three times I got something different. Yeah. Because the first time I saw it in Jersey, <clears throat> I had met everybody on screen, so every time someone pops up, you just. Try- yeah, yeah, you're and happy you for them. It's cool, right? It's, it's cool. It's like you, yeah. you start crying and you're like, the person next to you is crying. And you're like, I know, man, that's my friend. I go, I've met him. You know, it's like, it was so cool. It's just the, the love you get and the way the everything. So I had to make sure I was I was, I was there. Um, I kind of got, I did, like I said, I went to uh, San Antonio and, and here in Austin and I got to, uh, you know, I did the photo with Kevin and whatnot. Yeah. And it's, it's, it gets, it's just something that I, I'm, I always like, you know, better late than never. But I'm I'm a little late to the game, as I like to say. Like you said, 26 years and all that. But I, I like to see it as like, oh man, I'm I'm seeing it. Like I've I've seen all the movies when I was younger, and then growing up, um, I got my younger brother. He's gay, so I grew up with a gay family. Mm-hmm. Watching Chasing Amy when I was really young, yep. like, like it like completely clicked to me. And then later on in my early 20s, kind of doing my own version of Chasing Amy, I was like, the wonder I love this movie because I always can go back to it and remember. You know, it's like like I have something connected with it but then you go and meet the filmmaker and you talk about his movie and he's like yeah it's like he has a passion about it and you're like that's just it, it's contagious yeah it's pretty cool and uh chasing game it came out in 97 so very kind of early on kind of some pretty pretty rev- revolutionary in terms of the subject matter and mm-hmm. the message and uh yeah and it, it, it's, it's definitely one of his best movies 
it was the one that kind of brought him back uh because mall rats before it didn't do so oh, yeah. well at the box office but you know as we know now mall rats is a, a really awesome movie just you know maybe it didn't make 100 million at the box office but i, th- I actually think it's made far more than that by now and yeah. like you no know, dvd sales and merchandise so but uh yeah chasing amy definitely a, a movie a little bit ahead of its time uh, a great message and uh, yeah uh, like you said affected a lot of people for sure yeah because it, it, you know because it was also like a language that i just didn't i was like i'm around a lot of this and i'm seeing this yeah but other people don't and i'm like okay but but it's like the people that don't see it are the ones that are getting mad i'm like why is it bothering yeah me? why are you getting <laughs> mad you have no idea what i'm going through or what i how yeah. i understand this how, yeah right? And that's like I'm just, but it's it's this the I'm I'm all about story. Yeah, the story is so good. It's so great. And yeah. then the fact that you start to see this little, not a whole lot, but you start seeing the first Jane saw that Bob start to like evolve a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's like okay, so he's going somewhere else with that. Um, I mean, like this is your. I'm sorry, my cousin. My cousin just commented. Ming, no way, Ming. Hey, yeah, Art, what's up, Art? What's going on. Hell yeah, I miss comic book, man. Oh, oh thank you, man. Thank you, man. Me too. Me I, I, I every like, day. <laughs> David Madison. Every day. I hope they do the screening with Titanic. Oh, come on, Dave. <laughs> I do a comic book, man. Just your your uh, your experience on that. Like, did you gain more knowledge? Was it just fun? Or uh, the... no, I uh, everything. It was a great experience all around. Uh, as far as um, life experiences, and uh, you know, I, I mean, it, it, it's changed my life. And, uh, you know, it, it affects my life every day. Um, I, I, you know, they, they don't put guys like me on TV. They don't put guys like Walt Flanagan, and Brian Johnson and Mike Zapsik on TV. You know, the other three guys, are, they're middle-aged white men working in a comic book store. Yeah, I'm a middle-aged Asian guy who sits behind a laptop, presses buttons in a dark room and hangs out in a comic book shop. Like, they don't put guys like that on TV. You know, they put like Brad Pitt in the movies and Chris Hemsworth and you know, they put cool people uh, in the movies. So the, uh, you know, the fact that they made a, that somebody made a geek themed TV show that, that was watched worldwide and people liked it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And, you know, just as a, as a kid who grew up watching TV, you know, TV was, was pr- pretty much my parents really. Yeah. You know, my parents exactly. worked a lot. So, and, I you know I didn't have a, a lot of money and and so I I just watched TV all the time and I fell in love with the 80s TV shows and movies and you know so to actually wind up with like a legit TV show on a real network that yeah. a lot of people could watch it's pretty cool man and then not only that but we the TV show is based on something that I love which is comics and pop culture and I get to be myself like that's I think you know I think that was the ultimate situation so yeah. And then on top of that, we got to meet like so many cool people, you know, Stan Lee, Rob Macho, one, Peter Mayhew, you know, Jim Lee, uh, you know, Lindsey Wagner. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Adam West. Like we, there's, we got so many cool people on there that we got to meet and hang out with. And um, yeah, it, it was pretty cool. And then, you know, after the fact, you know, I started getting invited to comic book conventions. So then I get to go there and meet cool people and hang out with, and talk to pop culture fans yeah i mean my life is weird but it's pretty awesome man i can't yeah i got no complaints at all dude you're running on your own time hey but don't worry man like i don't i don't i don't think uh you've been left out either because i mean they left you out they don't give roles to me guys like me either they'll let me audition right but, you know so i'm actually i don't i didn't really want to learn all of this i'm just i'm an actor yeah. that was trying to act and i and people weren't putting me in things because I, I didn't fit a demographic i guess and then I started writing my own stuff, and then I and then I was writing for other people, and then they would like not cast me in my own things. Yeah, so I was like, all right, you know what the hell with all this? I'll just go on my own. So now yep. I'm just teaching myself whatever. Yeah, and, and and you know we we learn from the best, man. There's one guy who always is constantly preaching that. I was like, you don't need permission <laughs> from other people. Go do it yourself. And that's Kevin Smith. He did it. He he did it in the most extreme way possible by taking out ten credit cards, selling his comic book collection. Yeah, I mean he in the in you know in the 90s he shot a movie on grainy black and white and it worked that's that's crazy on his own yeah you know that's that's insane but by doing that and and, and getting it out there and having it become a popular movie and launching his career like he helped he helped so many people so uh and inspired so many people so thank god he was like you know what i'm gonna give this a shot this is a very risky move you know because if, if clerks failed 
he'd probably still be paying off those credit cards right now, working at the quick stop, you yeah. know? So he, yeah, that, you know, he, he took that shot. It like that, like that, that's not even like winning the lottery. Cause winning the lottery, that's all luck, right? There, you don't yeah. have any skill yeah, involved. You don't really, you know, you pick numbers and that's it. But he actually went and used his skill in writing and, you know, what he learned in filmmaking and just kind of did it the best he could. You know, he didn't, he, doesn't move the camera around a lot. He's, you know, wasn't an action director, didn't have money for color, not even color film, uh, put most of his friends in, in the movie. Uh, like the, 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 the boom mic was on a hockey stick. Like it wasn't even yeah. real, a real boom mic. And, and they edited it by hand. There was no like Adobe premiere or final yeah, yeah. pro. They, you know, they had to, uh, you know, they used tape and, and splice it together and it worked. So for anybody out there going, oh, I don't, you know, I don't know if I could do this. I don't, you know, maybe I don't have enough talent. I don't have enough money. I don't have the proper software. I don't have the right camera. Yeah. You're just making excuses for yourself, man. Cause there, a lot of people have done a lot more with a lot less. So. Yeah, man. That's a, yeah. I, that, that always kicks me in the butt when I, just, yeah. I'm like, there's some people that have nothing and they figured it out. And here I am just still trying. I, I think like, I don't even like thinking about it. I just like acting. That's what I was saying. Uh, yeah. When I was, when I fill in this out, I was like, you know what, man, I've been postponing. I kind of want to reach out. Let me just do it. Yeah, like, I'm glad, I'm glad you did. Cause this, you know, this gets you out there. You know, you, you reach a million people doing this. Uh, who knows? Somebody may see you as like, Oh man, I need that guy in my next project or, or, you know, I want to work with that guy. You never know, man. You never yeah, know. And that's, and that's what the whole thing about my manic Mondays is really just, uh, I always just say I'm an example. I don't like preaching or giving advice. Yeah. I, don't, I don't, I'm just, I'm, I'm just an example. If you need somebody, that that's open about struggling mentally and always working on it. I'll, I'll be there. But if, but to really, it's not an excuse. Like there's no excuse. Get, get your shit done and move. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll always help you out, but I'm not going to tell you what to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It was funny. Uh, there's a lot of people would, uh, through me, they would try to get to Kevin and be like, Hey, I have this idea for a movie. Can I, can I pitch it to him? And I'm like, he doesn't really listen to it. He's got so much of his own stuff. Like he doesn't want to listen to your pitch. It's like, you know what my advice is? Take that pitch and just, just go do it. Like he did. Yeah. You know, follow his example. Don't you don't need to ask him for help. You, he's already helped you. He showed you how to do it. Yeah. So go do it. So that's your that's your advice right there. That that's my thing. And I think I went on this um, like last year. I basically I I think I did one movie, one short movie, but I I dove di deep into more conventions and more podcasting to open yeah. my, my. Now I'm like ready to film, but it's more like I'm ready to film because I want to show David Madison. You know my feet. Yeah. I want to show Kevin Smith. I want to show you. Yeah. I want to show. I want to show everybody. I'm like, look, this is what inspired me. One thing I did not really count on hanging out with Viewscoop people because I love them. When I go to those yeah. events, they're the best people. One thing I didn't. Well, one thing I like the the local 404 is an awesome thing they they created. Yep. Yeah. And, and the local 404, and you can correct me. I believe it's um it's a group of people that from the Viewscoop that if you um you know if you get a little anxious or you have um you can't really do crowds they'll help yeah, you they'll help they'll, you out or you, out. you know even if uh you know if you go to one of these uh you know kevin screenies or events by yourself like you're not you're never alone you're with fans you're with fellow fans it's, it's like a family man and uh you know we welcome everybody just and come then, you know where are you from you want to hang out you want to go grab a beer whatever man like we're um you know you want to sit with me at the theater can buy you some popcorn, whatever, man. Like whatever we can do to make you feel welcome. Yeah, we've always been like that. Hey, everybody, he's not lying because when I saw him at the theater, I said, "What's up?" Yeah, <laughs> man, right, <laughs> right. I was like, "Hey, man, let's take a photo." Yeah, take for a photo. sure. I was like, "Oh, man, for so sure. cool." Yeah, I think I think, uh, and that's that's what I was saying. Um, just uh, just getting started uh, with with just anything, you just practice and you'll get you'll get better. But yeah. when we see the people that of the the view skew, like, um, oh, this is what I want to say. I, one thing I didn't understand uh, was the comic book, for, the love for comic books, that came back to me. Something yep. that, my first language is Spanish. I had issues with English, um, learning, just reading books. I'd give you a book, I'd be like, what is this, a Bible? I can't even, I don't understand. Yeah. They give me a comic book, I could read it, I could understand it. Yeah, you got pictures. Like, okay. I, think, I, I wish every book should have pictures, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I didn't even I mean, realize it, how... Yeah, in my world, they do. They're all comic books and trade paperbacks, but... You know, like I, I'm not gonna read War and Peace, but if it had pictures in it, like I'm in, man. Yeah, and I, but I, it's it's also right because it helps me kind of build like in my head. But it also, it's helped me um, read those plain books because sometimes I'm like, I want to create everything in my head, so that'll help me out. But it's like, well, how do I visually do it? How do I figure that out? Yeah. A lot of a, a lot of this is I've gotten a lot of advice from conventions. Like, um, I budget what I can to meet who I can when I go to a right. convention. And mm -hmm. I, I, one thing I, I learned was with. Sometimes there's some talent you're not going to meet. There's some celebrities you're not going to meet. Like they're not even show up or it's just hard to get to or 
you know, even with VIP, the line is just too long. Oh yeah. So so I learned to turn around and kind of start uh, talking to the, the independents, the, the smaller yep. people, and yep. that's when I I started doing that mid last year, and then that's when it, this year I was being like, uh, sorry, mid twenty twenty one, and then all of last year I was just hitting up all the the vendors and they started teaching me so many things. Oh yeah, yeah, you get so many great stories, and uh, you know, the vendors and the in, indie artists, they're grinders, man. They you know they. They, they travel, they don't know, it be, you know, it's all kind of, you know, if they make money, that's, you know, it's all based on if people buy their stuff. You know, some people buy a lot, one show and they, you know, and nothing the next, you know, it's, it's hard to predict. It's a hard life, man. It is. But they do it because they love it. And that's, that's why I love them so much. Oh man, I, I'm like, I want in, I want to do this. Yeah. Like, I've, I've been preparing for that. Like all last year I was figuring it out. Um, I got a, I got a buddy. I got a from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, nineteen seventy four. Alan yep. Danziger. He lives in Austin, and I I spent a lot of time with him. I got to do a lot of these little independent com- um, conventions with him. Yeah, and he was showing me the ropes and showing me how to do things. And I'm I'm like, oh, okay, I get this. I get to see the other side now. Yeah, it's um, cool. I mean, I think in the end though, it's just about hanging out with your friends, even yeah. at the convention. You know, you're at the convention, but then you're like, hey man, where are we going after this? You know, let's go grab a drink. Let's go grab dinner. Let's where's the after party? It's it to me. You I know, see it the as, karaoke. It's great. Oh, I can't wait. Dude, I want to do karaoke with you. Oh, um, yeah. We're going to do it, my friend. Yeah, we're doing dude, it. Uh, the, um, the thing is, too, with the conventions, it's one, there's like really no, like, it's like judge free zones, man. People are just, they're yep. there. They want to hang out. They care about the art. They care about the pop culture. They, they care about all that. They don't care about the bullshit outside of that. And yeah. That, that's something that I love that when I get there, it's like, you know, I don't talk politics. No one there does. <laughs> it's like, I love it, dude. I mean, maybe, maybe Star Wars politics. Oh, yeah. That, it gets that, deep like in that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You got yeah, like I get that. I'll let I'll let them have that, but man. Yeah, I you bring up a good point though. It was like all all my life I was judged for, you know, reading, you know, reading funny books, for watching the same movie over and over, for, you know, talking about things not of this world. Yeah. You know, and we're all sick of that. So that's why no one judges each other anymore because we we we've all been judged. We go to the Comic-Con not to get judged. Yeah. And it's great because we don't. You know, everyone know, remembers what it was like. I, I I was like I have a hard time like doing uh, Canon video or recording people. I just, I have to ask them. Like I just can't record. It's really it bothers me. Sure. And I remember going to the conventions and recording people's um, like oh, tables, and they'd be like, "Yeah, get it here." I'd be like, "I'm sorry, can I?" And they're like, "Dude, go for it." Yeah. And I, I'd be like, "You okay with this?" Like, yeah, everybody here doesn't care. And I'm like, oh. so yeah. I started learning because I was always like, "Excuse me, please, man." And then they'd be like, "Just go. We don't care. Quit talking to us. Do it." Yeah, just like, do it. Just do it. Yeah. And I love that. And I was like, cool. Like that, that means there's a place I can go where I can unwind. So uh, like, you know, your Monday through Friday, whatever it is you're doing or whatever it is, but that weekend you can, you can look at, you can look in the future and be like in three months, there's an event. I'm going to yep. go and I get to just unwind. I get to, yeah, but hang out and you know, maybe your friend, some of your friends join you and you just have a go and have a good time. It's a, it, like a comic con is like a three day party, man. It's great. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. I, but, but to get to comic con San Diego, like, or, or uh, you have to, you have to be on a list, don't you nowadays? Uh well I mean I mean most people do I I, I found a way to yeah yeah just gonna make it every year but even that was a you know that was a journey uh, I think a lot of people assume that I've been going for you know like twenty thirty years but um I've only been I think four times so oh, wow. I was- yeah I went way back in two thousand three uh, Cam was doing a thing over there so uh, I got I, I got I, I got flown out to help them out. And then I didn't go for the longest time. Uh, we usually be shooting comic book men, so we, we couldn't go. And I, yeah, I didn't go back until like 2018. So, um, and uh, it in 2018, much different experience than it was in 2003. Like it had grown exponentially. Oh, yeah. And it's big and it's chaotic and it's hard to navigate. However, all, all your friends are there, like the whole industry is there. So, I spend most of my time just going like, Hey, what table are you? I start making lists. So I just go around the floor and I just go say hi to all my friends, take photos with them. And then maybe I'm like, Hey, if you're not too tired afterward, let's, uh, you know, I heard this is like heavy metal boat party tonight at eight <laughs> on this dock. You want to go? I think I can get us in or whatever, or let's just get, go get some tacos or whatever, man. That's what Sandy, that's what Sandy was good for. And you know, uh, yes, I do go waiting line for exclusives. Because it's San Diego, of course. As a toy collector, of course you need those exclusives. You know, you get in line, you you know, you get the lottery number, or whatever. It's all part of the process. And then, yeah. then you buy all this stuff that you don't need, and then you have to ship it back to yourself because you can't fly <laughs> with it. That's San Diego to me, man. And then you know, it kind of culminates 
in the the annual Kevin Smith Hall H panel, which is to me is like the holy grail of all every panel at the San Diego. Like that's the one you have to be at. Okay, I, well, I'm, 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 the way I'm gonna get in, I'm just gonna make an animated movie and I'm gonna submit it. It's gotta be good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you <laughs> there they do give out press passes, and uh, I I tell I tell people I was like, hey, you want to go to Comic Con for free? Like even the smaller ones or wherever they are, hit them up and tell them you're a podcaster. And ask uh, ask them like, hey, can I get a press badge? Uh, you know, leading up to the event, we're gonna we're gonna do podcasts about the convention. Maybe we'll podcast at the convention, uh, but we want to help you promote. And bam, that's, that's free free press pass, free three day pass. And usually they'll give you for one and your co host, you and your co host. Usually weekend passes, you know, say a hundred bucks. So that's two hundred dollars right there uh, that you'd be saving just because you're a podcaster. It's a great it's great 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 way to get in. Man, thank you, Ming. Every everything I learn on this show, I apply. Yeah. So I'm definitely applying that thing. Oh yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Even the big ones are, you know, they'll uh, someone won't, someone won't even check to see if you really have a podcast. That's the funny part. <laughs> so you could just say, it. I yeah, I've met people like yeah, you know, I was like, wait, you have a podcast? Like I I I did two episodes. I'm like, all right, that counts. But clearly, just, they didn't look to see if they you had a whole you had a whole library or something. It was like you know they they maybe went on Spotify, searched the name, it was like oh that exists. So. Uh, but for me, you know, as a podcaster, I'm like, dude, use it to get a con pass. Like, why wouldn't you? It's just all you do is write three sentences. You know, I have a podcast that's called this. Uh, I love your show. Uh, you know, is there any chance I can get a press pass so I can cover your event? Yeah. You, know, you just got to phrase it in the right way. No, that's right. You unlock yep. it. I, th yeah. I think I think for the most part, um, going to a convention, because going to uh, San Antonio a lot, I, I started noticing the, the same people on tears. Oh yeah, and, th and then they uh, they start recognizing me at that yep. one point. They'd be like, "Just come on in. You don't need." Yep. I was gonna yeah, pass. Right. Like, right? Yeah, you're, you're yeah. You. your like, friends now. Yeah, I, I was like, "Oh, yep. okay," because I come here all the time. I guess. All right, hey, the drunken uh, turkey show. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, hey what's up? What's up, drunk turkey? Yeah, they're they're a cool show. They're, they're guys from my hometown. No, yeah, it's like it's pretty cool. Like you know, I'm from a small little town on the border, uh, Texas and Mexico, and it's quite. A, there's a few of us that are doing podcasts. I mean, I've been announcing yep. for a while, but I like that I see my homeboys uh, still doing uh, you know this. This is cool. I think I think like you said once you find a passion for it and uh, once you enjoy it, but it does take a little minute. I've been I'm, I'm already on year three doing this, and I'm barely. Awesome. Here. <laughs> I, awesome. I can't, you know what it was? The, I mean, that pandemic uh, crush was getting me, and yep. I think the fact that I just couldn't. I couldn't uh, do anything and it really helped me understand that I was like, dude, if I want to do something, I'm going to just, what it started with me just posting movies. I was, I watch a lot of movies when I get really down, I'll just start watching movies. And, um, I was watching movies. I started posting them all the time on, on a uh, Facebook. And then one of my buddies that I did an improv school with, he was like, yo, we should just start watching movies talking about them. And that's how side by side movies started. Yeah. And we're, we're actually bringing it back tomorrow. But then from there, just trickled. Um, honestly, meeting um, Brian O'Halloran, uh, Mary, Mary, uh, Marilyn Gigliotti, and yeah. Scott, Scott Schiaffo at uh, the uh, what used to be uh, then Wizard World, which is now, I believe, uh, GalaxyCon. Uh, Fan Expo. Fan Expo. Fan Expo. Um, when I, when I, uh, I met them through that, and that, because that was the only thing we had for conventions, and Brian just completely educated me, like schooled me in how to do all this. Yeah. And he had the all he had the all holler rant, so I was just like, all right, so my show's basically gonna be the all holler rant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then uh, and then met Marilyn and just how like honest and so like true she is. I was like, this is cool. And then I met Scott, and that's the one that really clicked everything for me because as he struggled with his, he was open about his story with struggles. Yep. Oh yeah. And, yeah. And I was like, dude, there's someone else like this is cool. So like I kind of just followed his his uh, career. I started seeing a lot of what he's what he was doing, and I, I you know that's one thing I love about Brian holler rant and um and uh, scott and and uh, they were still acting in maryland they just have they have other roles other movies they've done outside of the view skew and they still do well yeah and, they, and and i love i love it so when you meet them and talk to them about other things it's it's pretty cool like to really understand um like from my, where i am where i'm going what i'm doing and you meet people that are doing similar things so you're like you're not far just keep going yeah 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 for sure and uh yeah they're those guys are great man i'm glad you got to hang out with them uh brian and maryland and scott uh I yeah I, I we go way back but still I don't see him like every day by but, but yeah now with the conventions uh you know we, we appeared all uh, a lot of the same conventions together so so I've been seeing a lot of them uh, more lately and it's been it's been really fun yeah I try I tried to get to the, uh, man it's just like you were here in San Antonio last year and I couldn't even make it like I planned it and I just had the day pass and it's just like some they do, they do get a little tiring like the drive park everything oh and sure I, but i was just like man i did get to make it that time but it's also yeah, I'll, I'll i'll be back in san antonio austin before long 
Um, you know, I, I, for whatever reason, uh, Texas has been very good to me and, and the cities keep bringing me back. So, oh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I, I spent a lot of time in Houston, which I love that city. I know Houston gets dumped on a lot for being too hot, being too big, <laughs> being too whatever, but I find all of that beautiful. Like, maybe not the heat per se, but uh, I, I love Houston and uh, uh, Austin. I got to go to South by Southwest for the first time last year and I had a blast. And I, I'm, I'm wait, I can't wait to go back. San Antonio, I miss. I haven't been in San Antonio since like 2016. So, um, but I, I have a great memories of that city. Uh, you know, going to, uh, you know, Chris Madrid's, you know, again, that, that giant cheeseburger oh, or, yeah. yeah, or, you know, or whatever. But, yeah, you're um, salivating. That's, I, that, that's burger. I've been going, I was having since I was a kid, man. Oh, yeah. So that's good, like, man. So good. Like, imagine for anybody who's, who, uh, who doesn't know, there's a place called Chris Madrid in san antonio and they have the cheeseburger and they melt so much cheese on it you don't even see the the, the meat patty underneath it it's just it's so good man it's so good so oh dude i gotta put that burger up real quick before you go man this thing that you're yeah. right i i used to we used to go like used to drive two and a half hours just to get the the, the burger yeah man and uh worth I mean, it. to me yeah it's worth it um it's funny i i oh here it is i gotta show it to you real quick before you go it's 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 one of those things that it's it's like nostalgia that will always just I could taste it already. Look at this. Look at that thing. Look at how look at how much cheese is on that. It's so it's it's one of the best burgers I've ever had, man. Dude. And you know and, Yeah, it's 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 a, it's an iconic place. I've had movies a lot. And I've had every item on the movie menu. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If um if if a movie's pop up opens near you, go. Go. I mean, I, I thought you know they opened I was like, okay. You're, you know, and, and the ticket was like, what, 35 bucks or something? Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I mean, I was like, all right, that's kind of steep for the food, but you're going for the atmosphere, right? So I'm like, all right, so the food's probably going to be mediocre because you're just, you're going to the movies to feel like you're at movies. You're not really going there to eat. Yeah. But you are. And I, and I love that they took great pains to make sure the food was like outstanding. Like, and I love that strategy. They wanted to make the food good so you would talk about it. Yeah, um, I yeah, and um, I love uh, that you know. So they had the the cow tipper burger, usually the the cock smoker chicken sandwich, and then they would try to do something that was local. Um, here in Jersey, they it was a lasagna sandwich, <laughs> and it was and it was a vegan lasagna sandwich because Kevin's vegan. Vegan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then they had you know the hater tots and the the the, the onion rings, and yeah, it was so good, man. The vegan burger was really good. The yeah. bratwurst, like, the vegan bratwurst, mine broke, so I have to try it again. Oh but, yeah, uh, but it was. I told the uh, Jeff Anderson I had uh, four <laughs> movie burgers in two days. He just laughed at me. He went, ah! Yeah, <laughs> I was like, because I ran into him. I ran into him twice at a movies yep. thing, and I was. He was like, yeah, he was. I guess he was just hanging out. But yeah, I was there, and, and that was the first time I met Kevin. So there's um, that's this awesome. Is the, this is when where come on, you should be coming up soon. Where are you at? Pop up. This is when I. Uh, I don't know. It's not popping up here. Anyways, I, I was about to pop up the the image of me when I met Kevin. Yeah, it's still great. There you go. Oh, well, that's the one ah, I met him at. Awesome. At, the, at the that's at the at the shot at the. That's a great set. photo, man. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing I love. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing around with these guys, and they're having, they're playing back, and they're having fun. You know, it's yep. like that's the cool part. Yeah. Like, there we go. That's when I. So that's my son with me. Yep. That's when that's when we got to. That was during the pandemic, and he did. Yep. He still did his movies, and we did it toward at the here in Austin, and it was awesome. Just get the you know even being that close. And also getting him to sign like my my um, my bobblehead, you know, I mean my pop my pop my pop funk like of him, and I was like, that's so crazy, you just did it, like I just handed it to him, and he just yeah. signed it, and he just handed it right back, and he was like, hmm, interesting. Um, I did want to share. I did. I am actually uh, writing a comic book right now. Congratulations! And and, and I totally. And I don't want to. I, I know we're already. You're almost done, and I don't want to end on a low note or anything. But I totally was inspired because um, I. Uh, I did do an interview with Jason David Frank right before he passed. And that thing really like, um, I put it on the U my YouTube, like December 15th, not even knowing, just laying it out there. And the, the amount of feedback I've gotten from that thing, it just really inspired me. And I just kind of, um, I wrote, uh, I just started writing and as, as, as comic book form as I could. And he inspired me to write a, um, a book called the power within. And then uh, it's a, uh, it's now it's, it's, it's right now I'm, I have the story written, I'm working on illustrations, but I have it right here. And I just, I just like, it's so, it's so crazy. Like talking to you about how much you love comics and we haven't really yeah, talked. Dude, about that's that. awesome, man. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, you flashed a picture of me and Jason JDF 
And uh, yeah, he was one of the coolest guys I met at Comic Con. I met him way back in 2014. I remember his son was like, holy crap, it's, you know, it's Tommy. It's the Green Ranger, I remember. And he just came up and started talking to me. He was like, whoa, this is, this is cool. And, uh, yeah, we, I mean, we, we, we would see each other at conventions. We got to hang out a couple of times. But, uh, yeah, I remember the last time I saw him was about a year ago in Kansas City. It was the end of the day, and we were both kind of getting ready to leave, but we were sitting at a table, and we were just joking around. And I was like, hey, man. How you doing? You know, how's everything been going? And and I, I can't remember. I think we were making fun of something, and we were just having a great time, man. And uh, yeah, I, I know he was all. I I, the one thing that I always loved, I took away was I would look over his, you know, his table at a convention. You know, this huge gigantic line that stretched for like hours, but he gave everyone like a great moment. Um, if he saw like maybe you couldn't afford an autograph, like he knew he would he would just give it to you. And uh, yeah, the example is like, wow, he's really great with his fans. Like, I want to be like that. You know, I want to yeah. be, uh, uh, you know, I, I want, I want to leave everyone with a great experience. So that was something he, an impression he le- he definitely left on me. And uh, yeah, we're going to miss him, man. He was a yeah. big light, really big, big kind of boisterous spirit that we had in our lives that, and it's no longer with us. And it, it, uh, yeah, it stinks, man. It stinks. But I think, I think he, he always inspired you. I think you need to, you need to finish that comic and get it published, man. Because I, I need one. I need a copy. Yeah. <laughs> but two, I think you need to get that out to other fans as well. I th- I th- yeah, and that's the thing. I'm not trying. I think what I'm doing is um, I'm just gonna make it and I'm gonna get it out to, for free. Yeah. And, and and just let let people know uh, there's a story there and it's yep. my it's my it's like, I just it was just what happened was I wrote this, a quick story and then you know I don't know I, when I you let them simmer a little bit and then yep. you start oh, getting, yeah. and all of a sudden can't, I started getting can't get it out of your mind right and then you want to sit down and expand on it oh man yeah like it's, I'm just like yeah. this, this book here is like it's got everything that it just from like every like little motion I had yeah. or whatever yeah but, you um, need to you need to get that in comic book form my friend and I'm basically calling myself out right now doing this too because I wanted to share that with you and the the reason it is is just because um yeah dude I, I see the way you guys are I see the way you're passionate about that I love being like that I love seeing Kevin like that it, it yeah. does really make me want to want to do this and this is something I've never done but like I said I've I was I went back and archived all my interviews I interviewed like almost everybody at the conventions yeah. and everybody at the, the comic book people I can I, I uh, interviewed Pete Tomasi and uh he actually have a video of him breaking down how to make a comic book. So I just went yeah, back. Great, and isn't it? And uh, I, you know, uh, uh, all all the people who love what they do, you know, like me and you, we want other people to love it too. So if you need help, like we'll give it to you. We want, you know, we want you to have the same experience that we do. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll we'll break it down for you. And uh, that's kind of how this whole podcast studio started. We would go to conventions and people would come up to me and Mike and be like, hey. You guys make podcasting look like so much fun. Like you, Mike and Kevin, how do I do this? I want to do this. Like what, you know, what do I need? How do I get started? And uh, there just wasn't enough, to, enough time to really sit down and give them a, like a full lesson uh, until we opened up the studio. I was like, well, now we can teach classes in here. We can answer questions in here. We got people coming here, record and be like, Hey, uh, you know, just get experience doing what we do. So yeah, that, that, but a lot of that stemmed from going to Comic-Con. So yeah. Yeah. And- and you know, um, and then, and thank you, yeah, because it gives the opportunity for people to know. Like when I got on your website, I was trying to pl- fly over there. I was trying to figure out how to fly, and I was like, "How am I going to cost? How am I going to budget this out?" And then all of a sudden, I saw, I saw remote, and I was like, oh, "Yeah, man, God. yeah, I'll jump I, in with you." I didn't. However, oh, right. next time you come up here, man, you got to come to the studio, man. Yeah, no, I'm doing. I didn't. Sure. I didn't even know it was. It was. Uh, it was like right there. I yeah, was like, it's oh, literally wow. the one I'm in right now, two blocks from the comic book shop. So yeah. Dude. So okay, I'm gonna let you go in a little bit. I got just one thing we gotta do: the my manic oh, yeah. media. Um, oh yeah. Since, since you already kind of do, uh, usually my manic media is like what do um, what do uh, my guests like want to share with the other viewers or guests, and what what they can help, what they use to unwind and, and relax, and uh, just kind of um, you know what what is it what they like to do to unwind. But with you, since we know you like comic books, yes, we know you like Star Wars, yes, and we know you like food, yes favorite comic book that you like to unwind to favorite star Wars movie you like to relax to and favorite food you just like to eat. Awesome question. Uh, comic book. Yeah. I read a lot of my old books. Uh, I, uh, I got to, I got to moderate a panel with Garth Ennis a couple days ago in Kansas city at planet comic con. And, um, not really a, a book that you unwind to per se, but, uh, he, he wrote a, he wrote a book called preacher, which is very popular, very disturbing, very weird and one of the first books that got me back into comic books and i find that one i i read over and over a lot 
Uh, there's another comic book called Why the Last Man that I really like. Um, uh, about the last man on Earth. Uh, during um, there's a disease that that kills everybody with a Y chromosome except for one guy and his monkey. <laughs> yeah, great book. I gotta watch um, read that. Yeah, for sure. And I'll go back to the old school ones. I'll, I'll read Spider Man. You know, if, if I just want to chill out, and I want Batman. I read read a lot of like uh, Frank Miller Batman. You know, Dark Knight Returns. Oh, I love those ones. Yeah. Stuff like that, and then you know, I'll 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 read uh, like the Marvel, Star Wars books as well, the newer ones, just because they're you know they're in canon but outside of the you know, the main universe. Uh, those are cool as well. So, but yeah, some days I'll just go to the comic book shop on like I used to go like a new comic book day, which is Wednesdays. Like I'll I'll grab a really good cup of coffee from next door, and I'll sit. I would sit in the store and just read for a couple hours. And trying to, you know, and my it was cool. Mike wouldn't yell at me for being a library <laughs> or whatever. So yeah, that was, that's like that's my ultimate way to unwind. Either you know, I I love being able to like read a comic book, drink a cup of coffee, or even drink like a beer, you know, and and being able to read comic books. So um, like that's the total experience. Uh, movies, Star Wars movies. I, I I love Empire Strikes Back, but oh, yeah. you know, these days, like I'll I'll go and just watch The Mandalorian over and over, man. It's such a good show. So well made. Yeah, and I didn't. I even forgot. I I didn't know season three was coming up this quick, and then I was like, wait, there are two episodes out already? Like, holy cow! So <laughs> I went back and I've been I've been catching up on those. So those are very, those are so good. Those are yeah, they're just you know John Favreau and uh you know the the pride of Austin, Texas, Robert Rodriguez is. Yeah, um, directed a couple episodes so uh yeah i i i love like anything disney plus you just pull up randomly it's like oh i'll watch bad batch i watch clone wars i'll watch you know i even watch like you know episode two if it's yeah. if, if it's there so you know like yeah. um yeah i i since i made a like a little short movie in like 1997 and i was also an extra in desperado Oh so really? It's built. It was filmed in my hometown. And yeah, the, yeah, no Sudan way, Kuna. man. Cool. And, and the and so ever since like 1998, I've heard, oh, you're gonna be the next Robert Rodriguez, and I'm like, well, yeah. why, well, I'm Mexican. He's going swelling, but I, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it's like, but it doesn't matter. I, I get, I get. But that was like my, my response, like such a nerd. I was like, well, but I, but it, to me, I was always like, that's awesome. That's a cool comparison. Yep. And now, even like that, when I do like someone, uh, I did a bio, and I was like, I gotta give Robert Rodriguez like my props, man, because. He really left a lot of I call film debris in my hometown, and I just picked up on it and just watched and just saw like I, to watch them do that, and then get to go home and do it. Yeah, it's great. You know what's great about him? Uh, so I, I was lucky enough to tour Troublemaker Studios once. Uh, I got I, I just I knew a guy. Actually, I knew a woman who knew a guy who got me in, gave me a private tour. And the the one thing that struck me about him, besides how good of a filmmaker he is, he does everything in house. Troublemaker, they have. Uh, you know, if you need if you need weapons, they make their own weapons there. They have like a, 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 a like a an armory, I guess, or they'll three D nice. print stuff. If you need costumes, they have a whole costume department. They have you know their whole green screen studio where they shot Spy Kids. They have uh, a recording studio for the music. Uh, yeah, I love that. It, you know, like we said, like he's like I don't need any outside influence. I have it all here, and not only that, I can hire the best of the best because it's my place, it's my studio. So I hire my own people. And, you know, and there's no delays and there's no BS. And I thought, man, that's, a, that's awesome, man. That's a way to do it. So, um, so yeah, big ups to Robert. Yeah, dude, he's always, he's always been there since day one, man. For sure. That's yeah. Big. So, yeah. So food though, foods, food's the tough one, man. There's so much variety. Like, you know, if, if you just want to chill out, I say like a good bowl of like Japanese ramen, like just hits the spot every time. Yeah, for sure. But Gather, man, there's so much, man. Like we said, the Chris Madrid burger, like sometimes you just need that, right? Dude, I right? love cheeseburgers. Yeah. I love, I love yeah, yeah. sometimes you need that. You know what? Sometimes you're still partying at six in the morning and you're hungry. What do you do? You go to Whataburger, my friend. You go to Whataburger, get Whataburger and spicy ketchup at six in the morning. Like that's that's heaven right there. Dude, I, used so to be to, I used to be able to tear down a uh, double meat, uh, double bacon, jalapeno. At two yeah. in the morning, dude, and then just they take all the regret and love it. But it's weird, I don't think I've ever eaten Whataburger on like a regular hour. <laughs> it's always right. It's always like three in the morning, like six in the morning, whatever. Um, you never just, eat it. Like I've never. It's like oh, it's it's you know it's it's lunchtime. It's noon. Let's go get Whataburger. I don't think I've ever done that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. No, right? There's a there's a pizza place here called Rapolo's. It's like downtown Austin. 
And I think it's it's only good when you're drunk. Yeah. Cause, and I, like, I don't mean to sorry for polos. No, no bad. This was years ago and I haven't done it. But I remember uh, being like, man, I ordered some during the day and I used to love this. And then one of my friends was like, dude, we're eating it smashed. You're sober. It, yeah. Like, and it, yeah, you're sober. You can taste it. Yeah, I was what like, the oh, hell? Wow. What, do you, what did you think it was going to taste like? Yeah, yeah dude, I, I definitely, I'm simple, man. I, I like a cucumber with some lime and salt. That's sure. Good. I, mean, I, I could eat, I could eat, I actually ate two today. I got like six in the fridge. I'll just nice. go through them, man. That's, that's my, that's simple. But like meal, anything Italian, anything yep. Mexican, anything oh, seafood. Yeah. I can yeah, seafood. Yeah, Asian, all of it. Yes. When I go to when I go to Jersey, I've I either having crab or I'm having lobster. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good move. It, it's right there. I don't. Yep. I mean, I got. It's pricey, but I'll save up for that one sure. meal because it's it's good. It's good. Yeah, but I think right now I think food like I gotta go with any any, any drunk food. Anything you would eat at three in the morning, <laughs> in the morning. after. Uh, yeah. After after being out. Yeah. That's that's what I'm gonna gravitate toward. Dude, I went to Vegas. Uh, oh I guess. man. Dude, 2020. Well, right before pandemic, yep. uh, I went to I went to Vegas and I uh, yeah I got a little I got a little little tipsy sure. and I was like I want to have a uh, uh, steak and a uh, steak and eggs. Yep. At 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 four in the morning, we yep. came back. I had steak and eggs at four in the morning. Great, man, like, right? It was amazing. Yeah. It was like, but I like the whole experience though. We're like yep. also the person knocks on the door, opens this, brings in this cart. It's a nice shiny. It's a nice shiny, you know, tray, and it comes out, and, and just like, wow, like I just picked up the phone, said steak and eggs, and put it yeah. down. Yeah, boom, done. And, and I'm pretty sure I didn't even say steak and eggs. I'm pretty sure I said, "I mean, steak and eggs." And oh then, yeah, but they can translate. <laughs> they my can translate yeah. crazy. Oh. Well, Ming, it's almost an hour, man. I, I would love to talk to you more, but I don't want to take too much of your time. It is late. Um, yeah, see, like I said, we got rolling. And it was like it was like no time went by. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, because I can see I'm, I'm looking at the timer and I'm like, dude, I could literally talk to you for like another three hours. Yeah, for but, sure. I, but I don't we don't have that. So, well, uh, let's but, continue this in Jersey when you next time you come up. Yeah, definitely come to the studio, man. Let's record. Yeah, more. definitely. Yeah, I'm the, I, I will be looking more into this uh, shared universe. Oh, please. Um, yeah. You oh, to, you, wait till you come here, man. It looks like pop culture exploded in here. Ooh, ooh, this get yep. me with some of that. Uh, yep. You know, when you with uh, toys and 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 um, cartoons, do you link them together, or do you just kind of just go with like? Um, I mean, about? you know, I, I mean, the, nowadays the thing with the toys is, uh, so all the stuff I collected, you know, GI Joes, Transformers, you know, whatever. Well, now they just make better, more expensive versions of them. Yeah, they're so, for adults. They're told definitely for adults. They're not. Yeah, for, uh, they're not for. Kids yeah, anymore. there you go. So you know, I have my vintage. Oh, it's awesome. I love Springer, man. Yep. I, yeah. I, I'm, I guess I think it's I'm, I'm a hybrid. I love hybrid. Yep. People, and he's a helicopter yeah. and a car. I mean, I, I love my vintage toys, but you know, if they're gonna make like an eighty dollar GI Joe version with like a lot of articulation and cool packaging, like you know, they got me. They got me already. Like, it, <laughs> yeah, it stinks, man. Is is GI Joe your go to? Uh, it is. Yeah. When I was a kid. Yeah. I love, I love GI Joe. Um, like that was my, that was my toy when I was a kid. That was the one I loved. That was the one I lived for. And, and I mean, it continues on now to this day, but, um, and I still have, I have most of my old ones. I don't buy a lot of the new ones unless they're really, really cool, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And then, and then, you know, one day, this is the Mike Zapsic Funko pop figure. I didn't get that. But you know, one day, one day they might make a toy of you, you know, if you get lucky enough or yeah, you Let's might get that. a Mike Zapsic. You, you know, you could get it. You could get a, a Kevin Smith for sure. And, uh, you know, I got, Hey, wait, Hey, I got, what was you got? Uh, what else you got there? Oh my God. He's you going to make me buy all this right now. Yeah. You know, one day you might get a Ming Chen, you know, you never, you never know. It's yeah, this though. This is cool. This is so like this, you know, they, they just, that's this so wasn't awesome, supposed man. to happen, but it happened, my friend. So this happened because I, I, I be I, I kept yeah. I never stopped being a geek. That's why this happened. So that's my lesson to you. That thank it's, you. That if anything, thank you. That's that's one thing uh, my brother that's twenty, I, and I tell him, I go, I think what happened to me is I never stopped being me. Right. And I turn thirty nine next week. And yeah. I think I think that's cool with me to be yeah. like I, No, always, you know, whatever you love, it doesn't get any less cool. No, you're right. And neither do we. So and, and check this out. I love that that you're showing that because I was like, and I I've earned two of these. Nice. And I walked out a winner on one of them. So we'll nice. talk about that later. Nice. Uh, nice. But yeah, definitely gonna oh, next time I'm gonna have to make a, a trip when there's an event. Uh, oh yeah. No, you're gonna love it. You you're gonna love and, it. Let's uh let's create some content here, my friend. Yeah, dude. Let's do it. Well, me, dude. Uh, like I said, yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna let you go, man. Thank you thank for you, stopping man. by, and thank you for uh, being uh, helping me out. I'll be reaching out to you uh, more often so we can do stuff. Um, you got anything you want to say, even though you got you you good? Oh yeah, no. Uh, you know if uh, I go to a lot of Comic Con, so 
chances are I'll be at one, at one near you. So if that happens, come hang out with me. And uh, yeah, my Mag Mondays, my friends, it's the best show out there. Make sure you're listening, subscribing, and telling all your friends about it. And uh, it was my honor to be on with you, CJ. It's great seeing you again. Yeah, thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be I'll be in contact, and we'll be running into each other pretty close. Uh, pretty I soon. mean, I will. I'm going, man. I'm going to East Coast soon. Um, yeah, we'll see. I know. I know. I'll, I'll be stopping by. All right, Ming, man, brother, you take care, and I'll talk to you later. Thank Peace you, out. guys. That was Ming Chen, everybody. Thank you so much, Ming, for coming on the show. I think uh, he, 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 you see what he does, the way he talks? He makes it so simple. He makes it so easy. I don't even have to really do anything. All I really have to do is go back to the, to the comments because I saw a bunch, and I was like, whoa, got some comments tonight. So we got, you know, we got Big Blue, what up? We got the Drunken Turkey there in the, there in the house. David Madison, I will be in Texas in May. I'll, I'm going to be hanging out with you. We're going to chill. Big, Oh, that's Big Blue. What up, bro? Big Blue and that was both of them. I'm buying a ranch in Copas Cove. Hell yeah. Hi, on the Lauda. Yes, he was an amazing experience with him. May he rest in peace. Yeah, dude, JDF. Um, yeah. So I'm going to let the, 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 the show go. I was going to do the videos I like to do, and I, I like to, uh, you know, get all get it all going but we could do it next week so remember this is my show the power uh my comic book kind of come out the power within it is uh, a jason david frank inspired comic book and um yeah it's gonna be free so as soon as i i can uh, get this thing done i'll be selling uh sending it out and everybody go have a copy and i'm still working on wits in too david don't forget working on wits in two animated and uh yeah let me just show off my uh my many there's david madison when we hung out in san antonio and then there's um here's the 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 when I said I met Marilyn Scott and Brian there's that and also where's the last one I want to do there's Scott there's Kev that's the first time I met Kev and that was at Rhode Island Comic Con here's a my favorite flavor of M and M's blue here's some fan film I made a uh, fan uh, meme I made for Scott I did a, a hybrid of a uh, um. The uh, They Live and his Chulies Gum Guy representative. Uh, all right. Well, that was the show. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. We're going to do a little exit music. And, uh, yeah, well, My Manic Mondays member. The movie, I'm going back with the old school song. Wait, come on, play. Anyways, there we go. I like to say, uh, member, I don't really have any advice, and I don't really know what to tell you, but I am an example, so just kind of see what I'm doing, and if it doesn't work, do the opposite. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming by tonight. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks, Blue. I'll see. I'll be seeing everybody. I'll be seeing drunk, drunk in Turkey later. I'm going to have you guys on soon. But uh, thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us. Um, thank you, Ming. Thank you, everybody. David Lee. Thank you, Anilada. Thank you, Blue. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Mark Lamb. And y'all have a good night, and y'all take care. Peace.